So one of the things that was interesting that came out is the value of neuroprotection in the pre-hospital phase, uh, particularly in patients who are undergoing mechanical from back pain. Now, neuroprotection obviously has a long history of success in experimental models and unfortunately a long history of failing in clinical trials. And the difference really has been that experimental models for most part have only a transient occlusion before a neuroprotection agent is administered. On the clinical side, when you're applying neuroprotection to a broad group of patients, most of them don't have recanalization. So really the neuroprotection going to the area that it's required is minimal because that area doesn't even have blood flow. So, I mean, it's always been that thought that maybe neuroprotection alone will not work and it has to work with something that ensures recanalization. Now, the downside or the, the challenge there has been that neuroprotection also has to be administered very early on after ischemia. So if you are waiting to do neuroprotection after you recanalize the vessel, perhaps the time window to see the benefit is already lost. So what we saw was that, you know, um, a trial that actually showed the administration of a neuroprotective agent in the pre-hospital phase really improved the outcomes in patients who underwent mechanical thrombectomy. So it makes a lot of logical sense that's concurrent, you know, or actually in parallel with the pathophysiology that underlies the whole process. So I think that what we will see perhaps more is neuroprotection before mechanical thrombectomy. So I think that that whole area has expanded and that perhaps is the next area of growth. I think that in terms of mechanical thrombectomy getting any better from a technical standpoint, you know, you're already at 85 to 90% recanalization. I don't think you can get much better than that. So new devices that perhaps not change that. Um, but I think that there's perhaps the opportunity to have a better outcome is really the pre-thrombectomy period where perhaps things like neuroprotectives may have a role. I think that we are in a, um, you know, uh, we are actually seeing a clear evolution in mechanical thrombectomy. I think we just have to be cautious that, um, you know, while we're trying to, and I think that's a word of caution that's been there for 25 years that recanalization is important, but it's not the only factor that determines um, a favorable outcome for the patient. So I think we have to optimize all the parameters to really truly see the benefit of mechanical thrombectomy and all the evidence that we hear really kind of speaks to the core concept that yes, mechanical thrombectomy and recanalization are important, but there are certain other parameters that need to be optimized well to fully derive the benefit of mechanical thrombectomy.